Hello. Well, today I'm going to show you how to move an outlet on the other side of a stub. I have this wall here that I am, have been repairing it, I'm fixing up some little places, mudding it, um, sanding it, and I'm going to have to prime it and then paint it. And once I get that wall done, I plan to put a shelf right here. Now, I measure my wall and it is 71 inches. And then I measured my shelf. My shelf is 31 inches. So you take 71, subtract 31, and you get 40. So 40 divided by 2 is 20 inches. So I want my shelf to be about 20 inches from the corner here and 20 inches from the corner here. Now, the problem that I have is there's an outlet right there in the middle. I don't want to lose that outlet. I want to have access to that outlet because all the outlets in this room are full. And I don't, I'm, you never know when you need another outlet. And so I don't want to lose the use of that outlet because when I put that bookshelf there, it's going to be permanent. Well, I'm going to attach it to the wall so it doesn't fall. I mean, it's not actually permanent, but I'm going to have it affixed to the wall so that it won't tip over. I've divided this project into several videos. So here is where I'm at. The, the red tape, the dotted line, this marks where my stub is. The ruler marks where my shelf is going to end. I don't want the outlet right next to that stub because it'll still be behind my shelf, my bookshelf. So I'm going to have to move that stub, I mean that, I'm going to have to move this, this outlet on the other side of the stub and I want it over here. That way it's got, it's got a few inches away from the shelf. So it will, it'll be open and free and easily access, access, but I have to move it now. The wire, I pulled it out as far as I could to see how much play I have in the wire. Now, the there's a wire coming down from the top, and that's the shortest wire. And then there's a long wire. Wait a minute. They're both coming from the top. One wire goes into the top of the box. One wire goes into the bottom of the box. And this wire seems to be longer. Now, what I don't know is I don't know which which line the power comes from. If it's coming from the top wire or it's coming from the bottom wire. Um, and I don't know which wire is the feeder and which one is going away. Now, I do know that behind this wall there is a light switch and there's a light. So it probably goes back there. So anyways, I still have to use both wires to keep everything connected. Now I haven't shut off the power yet, but I'm going to. So don't fear. I just needed to plan what I'm gonna do before I actually do it. So um, I, I'm going to have to drill a hole into that stub. Since my outlet is going to be over here, that's almost, that's about, probably about 13, 13 inches from my stub, I'm going to have to make two holes. I have to make a hole for the outlet, the new outlet, where I'm going to re relocate it. And I'm going to have to drill a hole through this stub now. Since I know it's a narrow stub, running the wire through that stub is not going to be a problem. I just have to drill a hole. But in order to drill a hole, I have to make a hole in the wall. And so I'm, I'm wondering, is that wire, that short wire, is it long enough? Is it long enough 
to be able to go all the way over there without adding an extension. Since there is this space between where the outlet is and there's space here, I could probably swing the wire over, but I'm thinking that I might need to have my hole drilled a little higher so the wire could run at an angle down towards where I want the outlet. And that's what I'm going to attempt to do. So I'll show you how I do this. Here. I didn't expect there to be. Alrighty. Now we just have to figure out where to put the hole next to the stub because we have to drill a hole in the stub. I'm probably going to um, drill a hole at an angle because I want to bring the wire over and at an angle to try to reach here. That's one more thing I want to check before I make that hole. There's our current outlet we're moving it over there on the other side of the stub and they are the same distance from the floor they are 12 inches from the floor so now we have to decide where to put the hole so that I can drill into through the stub to be able to run the wires okay before I cut a hole I'm just gonna test to see if what I want to do is gonna work um, I have my thread attached to my little weight of a spool and I have run it all the way up the wall up at the top and around a string all the way down so that I can have the length of the wire and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my spool off to the left. Now I have a piece of tape on the other side because I didn't cut my thread and I didn't tie a knot on it. I have a tape just to keep it so I don't um, lengthen the length as I move. And I'm going to take my spool and I'm going to see how far over I can go as I get close to my hole. Alright, now I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to just run it over here to my hole. I'm dropping in the hole and you can see that it it makes a line and that gives me a pretty good idea my line comes right here and I want to see where it crosses well, I have a mark right here so right here and I can see that it, it fits I have enough uh, my thread actually went down into the hole a ways see I have enough thread so that's gonna work so I'm going to put my hole right somewhere in this place right here. There's a mark for my stud and this is where my thread is crossing. So this is where I want to put my hole. So yes, I have enough wire without having to add it to it, which means I'll be able to, once I get it moved, I will be able to close up that hole completely. So now I know where my hole needs to go because of the string. Again, I want to be absolutely sure I know where the stub is. So I'm going to do a test right on my mark. Yep, definitely there is the stub. Now I want to find, is it over here? Is it there? Am I in the center? I'm going to put another one a little less than a half inch. Okay, that's good so my stub is here it is within this these two spaces so I'm good I want my hole up here that I can reach in with the drill at an angle yeah because I'm right-handed yeah I think to make the hole I'm just going to use this 
as a guideline. I, I, I know I've got a long drill bit and I think having a little more space this way would be useful for the angle of my, you know, if I go a little higher, it'll be easier to go at, at that down angle. So I think I will make a mark to make a hole right here. So I'm going to make a hole there, drill down this way into my stub, So I can run my wire down that way. And you're probably wondering, how in the world are you going to get that wire? I've got a tool and I'll show you how it's done. Okay, I have a bore that I'm going to drill right through here. Here's the drill, the head of it. And see the hole? See the hole on right, right there? So you can actually run a wire through it and wrap your wires around it and you can use it to pull wires through. Okay. It is um, 16 inches long and this drill part is 3 inches which is long enough to go through a 2x4. Although I just have a smaller, I have a short space to go through so. But this will be good for lots of other jobs because I've got some outlets in the kitchen that I don't like where they are and I'm going to have to move them to a better location. So I thought it was well worth the investment to go ahead and get this tool. I decided to do the 5 8 5 8 uh, diameter because I've got two wires to put through the hole. I reach my hand in there and I can grab the wires. I drill the hole and then I'll have to cut the power off before I disconnect the wires. Okay, so this long wire that I have extra plenty goes from the bottom of the box. The other wire, that I can tell that this goes into the wall. I'm pulling on the other end and it's not attached. The other wire is not attached to this because it's not moving. I'm pulling on both sides. Now I hope that wire, short wire, is going to be long enough to go over there. Because that's the one that I thought was coming from the top, but it's not. Hmm. I have to think about that a minute. Because now I don't know where this wire comes from. It seems like it's coming from up there, but I only feel, let me see. I feel a junction box. That would be for the light switch right there. Um, but I can't get in far enough to feel the wires. I can see something with a flashlight. Let me see. I see a junction box about here and another box about there. Um, can't can't see the second wire. All right, now I'm ready to turn off the power. Uh, I'm gonna isolate the circuit. And everything that I thought was on that circuit is now off. Now you see that I still have a light. That's because this light is running an extension cord from another room. So that gives me enough light to work. Now I can disconnect the outlet and start moving my wires. Whenever you're working with tools that are cutting tools, drilling, always put on safety glasses. All right, we are ready to drill our hole. Oh, that was super easy. Grab this long wire and I can pull it up. Probably pull it out through this hole. Okay, th this is um, 
fishing rods for fishing wires. You can put them together and one of them has a hook on the end. It has a hook on the end. And the cool thing about them is that they glow in the dark. Let me show you that. They kind of glow. The darker it is, the more they glow, so it's easy to see them. You can put them together just by screwing them. And I can probably get by with just putting two of them together. Um, it comes with four. I don't necessarily need all four. Now this one has a hook and this one has a little point, which might actually be good for going into that hole. How easy is it to find that hole? Okay, that's pretty easy to find that hole. Um, I might just do three. So I'm going to make it six feet long just for having that little extra space. I think this costs about $20. Not too bad. And it will be useful. So I should be able to slip this right through the hole. So this is a test. I have it in the hole and I shoved it in there. I have about four feet of it in the wall and I want to show you how you can pull it out through the hole. So I'm going to use the end of the hook and reach up here until I get it. There we go. And there it is. So if I have the wire attached to it, I can very easily pull the wire right through. So now we know how that works. We'll attach the wire. All right, now we need to attach our wire to our fishing pole. So I think I'll use the ground wire and I'm going to slip it through that hole. And I'm going to tape this together. Um, I want, I'm going to have my wires like this. And I'm going to tape all this together with electrical tape. We want it to slip through nice and easy and we don't want any uh, sharp points or anything that's going to catch. So I'm going to go all the way down, leave a little piece hanging off so it'll be easy to rip off. And so now we have our wire attached through the loop on the hole. Now we can move that wire down the hole. All right. into the floor here. So I'm going to take the tape off. I got my wire through. I want to disconnect the uh, fishing pole from the wire. As it turns out, the long wire is plenty long. Now, 
the short wire looks too short to reach that outlet. But I think I know what I need to do. I have extra wire right here. And I need to get this wire to be joined over here. Which probably means I'm going to have to cut a hole here. Here. And drill a hole this way. To run wire from here to there. Which means I'm going to have to put another junction box right there. And so I'm going to have to splice the wires together. Using caps. And they'll just be inside the box. Now whenever you do that. You have to be able to access it in case there's ever a problem. So rather than patching the hole, I'm just going to put a flat cover on the whole thing. That way they can be spliced together in this box and I can have a wire coming from that box to this box. I've got plenty of wire here. I just need to make sure that I've got enough to wire up this outlet and it can go from, from there to here. That. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this wire. And that is enough to do the job. To learn more, check out my other video. For the flat cover on here, you'll still be able to access it if ever there's a need to change wires or check something, whatever. To see how I finished up this project, patched the wall, and wired the outlets, go to my channel and subscribe so that you get all the notifications for this project and more like it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.